Greetings, beautiful souls. It is your sister at heart. My name is Princess Sianja, and I am here again with another motivational soul healing video, specifically for the chosen ones. If you are coming for the first time, please do press the subscribe button down below and press the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being part of the family. I truly appreciate you for coming back again. Without wasting any more of your time, let's just go straight to today's video. If you know that you are the chosen one, there are things that you need to be aware of because your life is not meant to be like every Tom, Dick and Harry. Your life is different. You know this by now. And I don't need you to even tell you. You don't need another person to tell you this. But chosen ones are already coded into becoming the people that they need to become under certain circumstances that they're going to come across in this lifetime that need them to play their powerful part in resolving those particular issues and challenges for themselves and those who are closer to them. So if you know that you are the chosen one and you, you, you've you been asking yourself questions, what comes with being this person that I am? What comes with, with the difficulties that I go through? What is the purpose of all the hardship that I go through? Being the weird one, being, being the black sheep of the family, being the one who always have to pick up the slack of other people, being the one who have to see things and people for what they truly are and really stand for the truth. What are the perks of being the chosen one? What does it come with, you know? What are the strengths that I, I gain out of being this thing that I am and how do I then utilize them? It's very simple. As the chosen person, you need to be close to nature. You need to be very close to nature. Nature has to be your best friend because People of this world were not designed to understand a person like you. You came to take as much punches as possible with the purpose of fulfilling your life purpose that you know based on the path and your life journey that you are currently embarking on. And how you pay back the karma of those who were there before you and how you balance and neutralize everything and toxicity that is in the family. Every time when you find yourself as a chosen one doing something that is different from the rest of your family members, just know you're breaking generational curses. When you decide to step aside and give a distance from certain particular people, even including family members who might have shown signs of being toxic, signs of being jealous, signs of envy, signs of not being willing to dust themselves up and make this life worth living for themselves and those who they have brought into this world you decided to bring that distance between those people not out of hatred but out of protecting the light that you are going with there on its own it is breaking generational curses for you to be able to rebuild something that have been broken you need to be able to distance yourself from an environment that got it broken from a pl first place that's why we strongly do believe in the saying that says there is no way you will be able to find healing in a place that broke you. Most chosen ones, they find themselves stuck in the same pattern of being saviors towards Abantpagangulungulu without getting anything in return, simply because they are scared to leave. They are scared to leave where they, they have been of service for some time. They believe that there is no one who will be able to assist where they've been assisting for some time, not knowing that they are not really helping, but they are enabling people to continue act a victim just because you are the chosen one and you have the ability to help people and you have empathy and you are always willing to pick up and help people pick up their burdens where it's becoming heavy it doesn't necessarily mean that you must now abandon your own cup your cup must first run run over it must be running in an overflow and you must give from that overflow, not from half glass, not from, from a quarter, not from even a full glass. Let it run over for you to be able to give to those people that you feel they need your assistance. Because you, if you are not doing that, you are self-sabotaging and you are enabling them in their bad behavior, in their toxic ways of doing things and taking decisions. Because they know at the back of their minds, they've got you. You're gonna come and pick up the pieces for them. There comes a point in time where you gotta show people that you care for and people that you say you love, show them that there is a possibility of lifting themselves up. Show them the tools they can use to put together something that can become a step for them to climb even higher. 
so that you will be able to see people who really want that opportunity and people who just enjoy playing a victim and they want to drain your energy by just crying to you and acting as if they need your assistance only to find that they just want attention. So it is important to always put yourself first because when you put yourself first as a chosen one, you are preserving that light. That light is still yet to give a lot of faith and a lot of hope to people who are losing it, to people who are feeling as if it's the end of everything. Once they see you, once you walk in with that power, with that smile that you walk in, with the words you might have said or you might say, that will become a light towards someone who's going through darkness. So you got to protect your light at all costs. Not everybody deserves it. People need to earn it. As the chosen one, it is non-negotiable that you need to walk barefooted. You cannot be found wearing rubber shoes or thick shoes from Monday to Sunday calling yourself the chosen one and thinking that you will be able to take care of that light that is within. You'll come to the point where you feel that you're lacking something, you're feeling drained. People that you are being of service to are draining you or even people that you are just coexisting with in the workplace, in the family, wherever you come, you, you, come, you will find yourself absorbing each and every person's emotions, each and every person's state of being. Just because when you are not taking care of yourself, you are not boosting your energy, you are not protecting yourself from these people because you know what you are empathetic. So automatically you will somehow end up feeling that this, this, this thing that they are going through, it's going to be felt by you. It's going to be as if it is you who's going through what they're going through. So you got to walk barefooted so that you can make use and take advantage of that electricity that comes from Mother Nature itself that is absorbed by your body which is the machine one of the most intelligent machines that have ever been created is your body your body is able to absorb the necessary properties that it needs from the soil as you put your foot on the ground whether on on, on soil or on grass there is that electricity that is needed by your body that will be absorbed by the bottom of your foot and it's going to travel all the way to your heart heart chakra, that eye chakra, all the way to your crown chakra. You need that. You need that very much. It was not that we were uncivilized when you find that in our history, we were not very big in shoes. Shoes have always been there from the beginning of time, but we were making it our lifestyle to walk barefooted as people because we knew the, the benefit that comes with it. So you need to be somebody who takes advantage of nature. Sunbathe, sunbathe as much as you can. As you are sitting outside, enjoying the sun, letting your melanated body absorb the sun, the solar or the energy of the sun, allowing your hair under the sun to absorb the sun rays as it is working as your antennas, downloading the information from our celestial ancestors. And you gain this wisdom through just your nine ether hair, just sitting under the sun, enjoying the sun. There's a lot of DNA balancing, aligning, a lot of diseases that you are healing by just sitting outside the sun. And we see this being evidence even when we trace back of how we do things as Abandaba Myam. You find that in our families when there is somebody who is not okay physically, Abandaba Tala, they would take that person who is sick and make them sit outside and enjoy the sun. So they knew, they knew that there is something from the sun that have healing, that is medicine and somebody will feel better and better as days go as they put them outside the sun so you have to be closer to nature have plants have indoor plants if you don't have enough space to start a small garden start speaking to your plants guys nature lives as much as we always talk about animals how we eat animals other people say it's not good others say it's good those who say it's not good it's because animals have feelings and what's not plants have feelings as well they are living things just like you and me. So how about plants? You know, people who say they are vegan, they are vegan because they're trying to spare the pain on animals. What about the pain of plants? These are all living things that we need to take advantage of, that God, the creator, him or herself, created in abundance for us to utilize, for us to really like be of service to one another. Without human beings, plants cannot live. Without plants, human beings cannot live same goes with the animals so 
we really like this one gigantic system that is just working on its own and it is as it was supposed to be. So when you are talking to plants, creating relationships with plants by just having a conversation with them, keep it in your mind. Uguti plants can hear you. They don't hear the language that you speak. They hear the intention based on your energy or the vibration of energy that you are releasing. And they will respond to that. People who plant roses, they might have learned to Uguti. Roses are one of the most needy plants. They need you to say positive affirmations to them they need you to tell them how beautiful they are you can search this on your internet you know so what i'm trying to say is we are the same thing nature is nature the way you would treat the tree is the way you should treat yourself the tree is outside most of the time when it's full moon find yourself enjoying the full moon energy outdoors put on your crystal stones wear them all of them and sit outside for like two hours looking and gazing at the full moon i keep disturbing the slides i don't know why it's, it's it's doing that so sit outside and enjoy the energy of the full moon and do the same thing with them uh, with the sun the sun is going to give you the masculine energy that you need to get things done to feel protected boost your root chakra your solar plexus it's all for those foundational uh, states or energies that are within you it boosts them and then when it comes to the moon your moon is all about your, 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 your heart chakra, your throat chakra. It's all about your dead eye, your crown chakra. It's, 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 it's the energy of femininity. It's like a feminine energy. It's going to give you insight. It's good for your psyche, your, your mental state of being. So when you sit outdoors and just enjoy, there is a lot that you can end up enjoying and fixing and aligning within your well-being, spiritually, psychologically, physically, all the way to... Your, your your blood cells biologically so there is an importance when it comes to how you live your life your lifestyle speaks volume as the chosen one it can break you being the chosen one can break you or it can make you being the chosen one is is, is very bad and very good at the same time depending how you utilize the light and how you use all the challenges that you go through to shape you to shape the way you see things your perspective the way you view life the appreciation the gratitude that you end up gaining out of everything because as much as in building abanzima if you still remain resilient and become this person who still sees things to be grateful for regardless of how much trust me you have conquered most of the challenges of this world some of them people who are very much powerful they might have not have reached that mindset it's a mindset that takes you into living this life in a way of a lifestyle that will suit you the person that you are basically it's a lifestyle utilizing crystal stones crystal stones have all the energies that you already have within yourself so when you wear crystal stones you boost yourself you boost your crystal stones you have you, you are utilizing, you are manipulating energy. You are playing around with nature. There will come a time where during a day you will feel down. Somebody's going to come and try to make you feel horrible about yourself. When you have crystal stones that are charged on your body, instead of feeling less of yourself, you're going to feel that this has nothing to do with me. Whatever the person is saying, it's how they feel about themselves. And you can decide, Uti, I am not claiming their energy. And really, you won't just be saying this with your lips. You would feel, Uguti, I'm not affected. So Ama, Ama Crystal Stones, they do an amazing work of actually storing positive energy for you. They neutralize situations, your well-being, energies. They make sure Uguti, they neutralize them so that you have the best experience as possible as you can. So these are the lifestyle, these are the things that are part and parcel of the lifestyle of the chosen one. You need to be somebody who's clean. And when I say clean, I mean from your mind and from your heart. And when I speak like this, I'm not talking based on the religious standard of how to be clean. Because Nabo, some of the things they say, they, they, they are not being realistic. Because Vele, you are a human being. There are situations you're going to go through. What matters the most is, do you intend to harm and hurt? Norma, you're going to fall, bump hurt, scratch yourself and fall and make mistakes in, along the way, including hurting other people, but it's never intentional. Th that's the difference. There are two different people in this world. Those who hurt people intentionally, who plan it, 
who are just there plotting and twisting everything that they want to do to manipulate situations and people to get what they want. And people who, who, who are really just genuinely living life the way that doesn't harm and hurt any other person unless if it is part of life mistakes. In Akuzotolukuti, when you trace our name as black people, Amangoni. Amangoni is the word that come from Abangoni, those who do not sin. Because really we do not sin, but their religious books introduced the sin. And they told us this is how you need to live. Uh, there are 12 commandments. There are people who came 6,000 years ago, they didn't know Ubuntu. They needed to be taught that you don't kill your mother, you don't kill your father. They needed to be taught to walk with both their two feet. They needed to be taught to go to you actually sit and eat with your hand when you eat. You don't just use your mouth like an animal. So we cannot apply AMA rules that were invented 6,000 years ago for certain particular individuals when we've been in existence for billions of years as a band. So what were we doing all these other years? How were we living if we didn't know the simple things such as don't hurt someone else? These are the things and the instincts that we were born with, Tina, the original bandu. And that's the beauty of it all, the beauty of knowing yourself, the beauty of embracing yourself, of loving yourself the way you are. Embracing our hair, knowing that it's not just hair, it's nine ether. We use these as our antennas to actually learn the things that we know. We don't have to open books. We didn't open books. We didn't have curriculums. When they were stealing people or selling people as slaves, they didn't take anybody. They took people who were very smart. They took astrologists. They took people who had knowledge of medicine. And that is why when you find in this day and age, when you search things, people who invented them are all white. But these people came 6,000 years ago. How is it possible? Because we have seen the gene of a black person is billion of years. So they must make it make sense. You know, I don't want to get off the topic, but what I'm trying to say is as the chosen one, there is a certain way of living that you know. As a chosen one is somebody who knows, which there are times where I get to speak, there are times even when I know so much, they know there are times where I just don't have to say a thing unless I am asked. There are certain things, the list is long, we will never be able to fit them in this one video. But they know these things. It's not by chance, but by design that you are the way you are. These are the people who know how to humble themselves, even in situations where they need to show the true colors. They show how powerful they are. But because they know their power, they don't need to prove a point to anybody. So when you are the chosen one, there are certain lifestyles that you need to make sure singole protected at all co at all costs abantu abakhethekileyo they don't do revenge because they are having nature to rely on when it comes to those things they know ukuthi karma will play its course because these people are not to be messed with when you mess with them you're messing with the person or the entity or the energy or the power that sends them to do and be what they are so i hope that this video did find you in good spirit until we meet again Love and light.